All right, we're going to be doing our recap here for the NASDAQ, June 20th, 2024. My name is Max, Rank One Momentum Traders. Uh, we'll be breaking down today's setups and looking at some of the signals and the alerts that we got, uh, as well as the trades I took, right? And I'll break down exactly how I caught 10R uh, today with these specific alerts. So first thing to note, our 930 open print was right here. That's what this uh, white dash line or yellow dash line represents. Uh, we had price initially sell off and we had been selling off since the London session. So if we were just looking at the chart, we could obviously see big up, big down, but more importantly, what is market structure telling us? Well, we have lower lows, lower highs, we have momentum, which is bearish. We can see super trend is red and we're seeing continuous breaks of structure to the downside. So obviously the, the market's heavy to the downside. Now, after selling off so much, we do anticipate some type of liquidation, right? We, we know that when the market gets so one-sided, it gets crowded. The market usually does some type of blow off move hit a bunch of people stop losses, uh, and that's exactly what happened, right? So price pushes down here at the open, and then they give us a big pullback to, to the 200 moving average, but more importantly, they pull back to what we call our flip zone. So our RMT zones indicator maps all this for us, so we are, are aware, not just supply and demand, but also these important levels where we have trapped traders. So price pulls back, you can see pretty much they attempt to break into that zone, fail, and then we get that big drop, right? But when we're looking at this, you know, we don't know if price is going to drop or how far it's going to drop. All we know is, okay, in this in this particular region of price, in this particular during the sequence, price is technically pushing up, right? We know that okay, we have some it, within a smaller structure, it's bullish. You can see super trends green. We're also getting buy signals here, as you can see, to get long, okay, and everything is kind of pushing up. But of course, we understand market structure is key. Price gets to where it's going, and then we begin to start failing. So here's where it got a little tricky, because price pulls back, and at, at the, the time that this happened, this little area here was a demand zone, right? And it was holding demand, holding, holding, until we broke. Once we broke, that was our break of structure, right? So now we could basically start expecting to see trend confirmation to the downside. We also had momentum flip for us, and then we started getting our trifecta signals. And this is why I love the tools that we have, because it really just kind of removes the guesswork. So we actually got the first signal. Let me just move this out the way. You'll see the first one came in right there. And then the main one, the confirmed one, came in right here. Now, whether or not you take this trade, you know, you could look at it one of two ways. Well, we're trading into a key level, which is our lug level. And I totally get that, right? Uh, the other way to look at it is, well, we are bearish. You know, we are coming off of our deep trifecta. That's what this actual play was. Uh, so if you do take it, you just take on the risk. You accept the risk for what it is, right? The signal comes in. Usually you'll get in on brick two, brick three, brick four. Your stop should be above structure high. So you'll be looking at a prior swing which could be right here, or you could use super trend. It's up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with. I personally am looking at a smaller bar period to then hunt the entry. So I'm getting in uh, probably within this, but then using a smaller structure based on the two bar or four bar Renko chart. And then what are we targeting? Well, we have our main target, but before we get there, we're taking profits, right? Because we know that most of the time you're going to find price will at least go a certain percentage, right, of the way. Uh, and so you want to lock in profit. You always want to pay yourself, and that's super important. Of course, we trail the stop. Uh, and anyway, so this big flush happens. Price just completely tanks. It's unbelievable. What a big drop, right? So from that first signal, we get then get our minor signals, as you can see. We had another one coming right here. That's more of a confirmed signal after we break the demand zone. And then we got two following uh, minor trifecta signals, actually three of them back to back. And you can see how perfect they lined up, right? So boom, trade one, trade two, trade three. And there was really no reason to exit this trade. And then we get our first uh, bullish shift of structure. And that occurs right here. So we can see we had a demand zone. And that demand zone might be looking a little faded here depending on uh, the, your, 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 your settings for your YouTube or whatever. But there was a demand zone that was right here. At one point, it was an active zone. And so our tool actually can highlight active versus broken, fresh versus tested. Because uh, I do a lot of work with, uh, you know, different type of supply and demand zones. Uh, anyways, we get the break of structure. We have a combination of the break. We have a combination of super trend flip. We got the break of the 50. There's our first signal. There's our minor. Uh, our minor. That's usually the first signal that comes in that signifies opportunity, right? So that's the first actual trade I ended up taking. But I don't have a screenshot of that, actually. Uh, but that was the first trade that I ended up taking. This ends up creating a flip zone. Okay, and then we get this move back to the 200 moving average. Okay, so on this 200 moving average, we get another rejection. 
And then at this point, here's what we're looking at. Look at the trend. Higher highs, higher lows. So I'm watching to swing lows here, okay? So we're just watching. You can see we got another minor signal right in here. So we have multiple minor signals, right? And then eventually we get a trifecta right in here, okay? This is our trifecta signal. And that was a great play. So we caught that trade. I'll share with you that screenshot because I have that one here. But uh, you'll see right there. This is what it looked like real time when it was developing. This was a flip zone. That was very important for me because when I, when I take a trade, I want to make sure there's structure to support the trade idea. So it's not just an indicator. It's not just, oh, there's an arrow. It needs to make sense in terms of market structure. So we have market structure in our favor. Check. Momentum in our favor. Check. Right? So we have all these things coming together for us really, really nicely. And then so price comes back, you can see we get the signal right off the, the, we call this a stacked zone. We have a flip plus a fresh zone that forms. And you can see the entry came in right around a two, uh, 172 level, I guess. And we we're able to ride it up, took the profits. We took multiple profits actually, because uh, we took partials along the way. And then we exited basically right around uh, yesterday's low of day. Uh, you'll see the main target was up at 219. I don't think that we ended up getting there. We ended up taking the profit and calling it there for the for that long trade. Okay, so that was that play, and that was pretty awesome. It eventually got to the target though, right? It eventually reached the main objective. And then what ends up happening, once it reached the objective, we can see we get that transition again, right? So let's continue to observe market structure, higher highs, higher lows, and then we get the break of structure right here. And that break leads to a flip zone, right? So of course, when it first occurs, we don't know if it's gonna hold or fail, but there's a flip zone. And at the same time, we also had a, another flip zone that was formed right here. Uh, actually, at the time, it was a demand zone. So I'll pull that one up, and I actually ended up taking a trade here. And the reason why I took this trade so we had this, obviously, this trend right here, right? And then we get that nice little break of structure. So a lot of times what we'll see is when price begins to trend up, it'll do a couple of tests with the moving averages and all that. But then we expect that deeper pullback to the 200, similar to what they did over here for the sell side, right? So we get to the 200 moving average right here. And at this point, I'm watching what's going on. Okay, at, at one point, this was a demand zone, right? And I'm looking at how the sellers are trying to take control of price. So we had, obviously, price push down. We see the sellers are strong enough to shift the ATR. We get the sellers trying once. They tried twice. They tried a third time, and they couldn't take out the low. So at that point, I took a long trade, and here's my entry uh, right around 8187. I wasn't comfortable with getting in at the top of the zone because that would have been like a 55, 60 tick stop. Uh, so instead, I ended up getting getting long when we got into the flip zone that was here. So if you look here, you'll see this little uh, black box with the, the lines. You'll see my entry was right there at that midpoint, right? So got long there and put my stop right below the box. It was like a seven and a half point stop. And this is what you see a, a two R uh, risk to reward. Actually, I think this was a four R risk to reward. I ended up closing my trade at two R. Okay, went break even, and and then and, and I also sized down for this one. I didn't do a full size position, just because again the market overall was bearish, so I wasn't really sh confident that this was going to necessarily be a, a massive trade. Right, the momentum was obviously kind of weak. It took a lot of effort for price to be able to break out of that zone, so it wasn't one of those you tap it, it taps it, and then it runs. It was more like it just hung out and based a little bit, and it could have gone anyway. Right, but anyways, I took the trade. It worked out. Eventually, we, we do spike, and where do we spike? Into that flip zone. Notice how price comes into the zone, out the zone, and then completely crash, right? So that is a beautiful opportunity. Didn't take that trade. I was actually long into this and then cut the profit, cut it right before the failure, which is awesome. Uh, and then that was the main, that was the main, that, those were the main three trades right there. And then in the afternoon, I took additional trades, which I'll highlight as well, which I don't have screenshots for because when those trades actually played out, I was not at my computer. Uh, I was actually charging my car. <laughs> so anyways, so we get the break of structure. Again, now we have confirmed downtrend. Higher, uh, here's our first high, lower low, lower high. And then, again, we, we love using trend lines, right? I know some people like don't think trend lines work, but trust me, at least the way I use them, they work. <laughs> and then again, we get our next signal for a perfect trifecta right here. Boom. Not only do we get a trifecta, what do we have? Structure. We got that structure. So we got that flip zone plus trifecta plus the moving average. Beautiful. Bam. There we go. Now, if you were concerned about momentum because super trends green, no problem. Just wait for it to flip. You get the confirm signal right here, right? So there's our confirm signal right there. Pretty clean, right? And then we also got additional minor signals here too. So if you were late to the party, it's all right. You're good. You see? 
when the market's trending, you'll have multiple opportunities. You never need to chase, right? So multiple opportunities to jump in, another minor signal here, and then we get another trifecta reset right here. This one was also great. Although there was no specific, actually there was a level here. So we had a potential flip zone. The reason why I didn't fire off is because it actually didn't get inside or touch the level, but it, it did get to our initial balance low. So there's definitely a lot going on here. And again, what we're always looking for is that market structure with the, with the momentum to be in sync, right? And then they finally form a range. They get down to almost a 20,000 level, and then they start going sideways. And you can see here at one point, this was also a flip zone. They start holding, holding, holding. We get the break of structure, and then they begin the bullish uh, sequence here for the pullback. And eventually, we get that failure one more time. And this was the trade I actually ended up catching, which was... Um, right here so when we started getting this break of structure we're bullish okay we're bullish then we turn bearish and then notice how we're holding the level holding the level and then we get that flush right so that was a great trade beautiful washout trifecta signals everything confirmed and then the same thing they give us that pullback making everybody think the market's bullish again right obviously we know better than that and so all we wait for is for those buyers to fail and there we go we get that buyer failure Okay, they come in, try once, try twice, boom, there's the break. And where do you enter? Oh, look, the signal comes in right there. You could have taken the uh, the minor signal here. The problem with this is you're literally right at the key level, 20,000, right? So it's kind of tough to be taking those trades right into a key level. I never really recommend taking trades that are right at uh, a key level. Okay, and I ha we have a very specific definition of how we define key levels. Um, anyways. The real entry, the quality entry is going to be right here, right? We, we pull back to the moving average, and then we get that breakout break back in type sequence, right? And then again, we get the next shift of structure, which occurs right here. You can kind of see the supply zone here. It, it breaks. We get that, that, that initial shift, and then we get that first pullback, and there goes our next play right here, the next trifecta. So again, you could have gotten in on any of these signals, okay? And again, you're looking for a structure-based stop. So if you see an entry... In this instance, say we're getting long here, but you're not comfortable getting long here because your stop would have to be below structure, which could be potentially a prior swing. It could be super trend. It could be the moving average, whatever you want. I personally like using the super trend and structure. Um, but again, looking at the situation here, it's kind of like, well, on that first signal, you would probably have to use a 20,000 level or that moving average. But then we get this little play here. They give us this little higher high trap low. We love that, right? And that trap low comes where? To the moving average. So we just wait for the test. And then we have a way better entry. Not only that, but we also get some fuel for the fire because we also get some liquidity runs here. We get these guys stopped out. Those stops become opportunity for the market to move, right? And so, boom, there's that big push. And then you can kind of see here, we start basing here right at this uh, this supply zone right, right up in here. So this point of origin that led to the two legs down also became resistance again, right? Used multiple times. Tested levels are usually pretty strong, at least the way we have it uh, developed here. And then again, we get the same same process. Just wait for the break, and then you see continuation to the downside, right? And that's all the market was doing literally all day. I mean, it was the same thing repeated again and again and again. Uh, and so reading the market structure, reading the chart, reading momentum, this is an eight bar chart, so it's a lot less noisy, you know? Uh, but at the end of the day, there was so many trade opportunities. There was so many trade opportunities. And so, you know, I was able to capitalize and, and take advantage of some of the plays. I was able to walk away with 10R, happy about that. Um, and I will say a, a lot of it has to do with the simplicity of just, hey, look, momentum is telling us this, market structure is that, here's a confirmed signal, take the trade, set your risk, and that's it. <laughs> right? So there's not much magic to it. I wish I could say I was like an amazing trader because I'm not really an amazing trader. I'm, I'm just, I guess, pretty good at being coachable to what I'm seeing on a chart. Right? And that's really what it boils down to. Too many times we try to get creative and we want to make it fancy. And we want to be able to have the most beautiful exit and, and beautiful entries. And that's all great. But at the end of the day, the goal is to make money. The goal is to be consistent. The goal is to minimize your risk. Um, especially when you have market conditions that may not be the easiest to trade, right? So uh, being able to have a very simple but structured method that you're following day in and day out, I, I really believe that makes a difference for most people. So that was pretty much the day, and uh, hopefully tomorrow we get some clean action again. I'm looking forward to seeing what we get, but you know, really, really pumped about how awesome our flip zones, our RMT zones indicator is actually working. 
Um, I'll tell you, I used to manually have to draw this stuff, and it was a lot of levels that I would miss just because I wouldn't be able to see it on my chart. I'm so focused on what's going on in the moment that it's hard for me to say, oh, let's go back all the way to yesterday at 9.30 and look for a zone. Like, that's that's not practical, right? But with our new tool here, it's doing it all for us, and I will tell you, it has made a tremendous difference in terms of the quality of the trade setups uh, as well as the entries, you know, being able to be patient and wait for price to get to the key levels, you know, and, and a lot of times these levels, you, you don't even recognize that they're there, right? You might be focused on other things. Maybe you're looking at uh, some other type of stuff, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's amazing how some of the best trades I've caught this week and last week have come from these flip zones uh, that I would have never manually on my own have been able to identify, you know? So I guess that's one of the benefits of having, I guess an algorithm or a code that can do all this stuff automated for you, right? So yeah, what a great day. Super excited about everything that's happening here within the community. And um, yeah, I hope you guys got some value. You can check out the live stream along with the commentary as those trades unfolded. Because I know some people might say, oh, it's easy. After the fact, you can pull up a chart and, oh, yeah, this is what happened. This is what happened. I get it. That's why I posted the live trade session today, too. I actually posted it earlier this morning. Uh, so you can actually see, you know, you can actually see the trades. You can hear the the, the, the logic behind it. You can even hear when, when we're over here. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work, <laughs> right? Because, of course, I don't know. No one knows, right? Even if I have a signal, it doesn't mean anything. To me, everything is 50-50, right? Uh, so yeah, check it out. You know, Leave a comment, hit the like button. If you're interested in getting some more information about what we have happening here, you can check out our website. Uh, I will tell you that we're still in beta. You know, So although you can access some of the tools, it's not all fully out yet. Um, you know, We do have a small little... Um, a little group that we're working with with this with this with the strategy the indicators and all the tools so uh they're really helping us kind of optimize and refine everything um but i will tell you you know just just fo following the game plan here sticking to the charts and just being coachable to what's happening you know it, it's never been uh more clear and and more stress-free i would say right less emotional <laughs> and that's what it's all about right all right guys you guys have a great day and uh, i'll see you guys uh next video